Welcome to episode 16 of The Grocery Guru with Andrew Grant. How are you? Hi, Darren. Good morning. Yeah, very, very nippy, I think, is uh, the best thing to say this morning. It's supposed to get to minus 10, but let's oh. uh, move on from how cold it is. Last week, we said to our viewers that this week we would talk about terminology. Now, I'm going to leave the charge on this one because something that we're doing wrong as an industry or as category managers or as suppliers or supermarkets is when we use terminology that the shopper doesn't understand. And I'm going to give you an example. My dad used to run, uh, he was a produce manager in a sanctuary store back in the 70s. And they used to have those three-legged tables. And he used to have the best top fruit display in the area. But dad, what's top fruit? So Andrew, what's top fruit? Um, do you know, is top fruit apples, and banana, apples, oranges and bananas? Well, it's apples and pears, but I didn't know. I had to ask Dad. So there are right. signs that say top fruit, and I'm thinking, well, no one understands what top fruit is. When I asked Dad, he didn't know. But eventually, some years ago, I asked some guru in produce, and they said, well, it's top fruit because it grows at the top of the tree. Right. <laughs> okay, now, yeah. These can't be terms we can use in our industry if the shopper doesn't understand them. Well, I guess also there's, you know, going back to your dad in the 70s, there's a lot of stuff, obviously supermarkets you know, kicked off in the 70s in terms of that, you know, the superstore format. And there's probably terminology that was invented back then, maybe meant something to customers back then. Wow. But because most people are used to sticking their dinner in a microwave and heating it up for two minutes, it's it's been lost. I mean, the one that gets me, um, condiments. Does the average millennial know what a condiment is? <laughs> and would they expect to wear it rather than eat it? <laughs> So, so our challenge to our viewers is the more we can use language that the shopper understands, the easier the category is to shop. And yeah. the flip side of that coin, the more we use examples that the shopper doesn't understand, the less easy it is for them to shop, the more they'll go somewhere else. So yeah. I want to give you another short story. I was uh, buying frozen fish for a supermarket many years ago. And in the conversation I used to have on the phone with my account manager, we call two products, the most popular selling battered frozen fish, 076 and 077, which was their SKU number, because we could differentiate it away from 079 and 080. That's crazy. Well, I guess, I guess internally, it's not an issue. You know, there, there's a whole industry lexicon of three-letter acronyms, isn't there? Yeah. Or four-letter acronyms. There's the AG Scops, your PORs, your LFLs. Um, Those never, if you like, leak out to the shopper. Yeah. So I guess, I guess that's okay. It's the stuff that gets in the shopper's face that they just don't get. I mean, you know, one to, to flip the, the condiments one on its head. Um, you know, one of one of the more modern categories is world foods. Right now, hang on, world foods. Okay, pretty broad category, but why does just about every supermarket um, split out pasta? Because I think pasta is a world food, isn't it? <laughs> so they have a world food section, they have a pasta section. The, the, the bit that bothers me is when we try to be the buffer. So the 076077 was us using it. And when I think back, we were using that term because we couldn't differentiate, differentiate it. But if we couldn't and we bought the damn thing, how the hell did the shopper <laughs> on, at the merchant, at the fixture differentiate? And when I think now and look back at those four products on the fixture, there was no difference. Now, actually, one had skin on and one didn't. Well, we didn't tell them that. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, I guess, um, you know, going back to what we spoke about last week, it's that shopper decision hierarchy. How do you, how do you please most of the people most of the time in terms of what they're looking for? So you're right. To some people, skin on skinless, they wouldn't, wouldn't matter because it's covered in breadcrumbs anyway. Um, is that the most important? Is that one of the important things they're looking for when they're shopping? So, yeah, maybe it's that it's you know the the breadcrumbs are gluten free, something like that is more important to certain people than than others. And that um, would have been much better. We were not tough enough on understanding our category, understanding the decisions, and rooting out some big sellers because there was no differentiation. Yeah. Now, here's the other one that really just I, we work with a supplier. 
um, we shall remain nameless for a moment, some years ago, and they had a cooked ham, and it was about this big, and it's important it was about this big, and it was four by four. So we said to them, why do you call it four by four? Well, it's four by four inches, because that fits in a slice of uh, bread. Yeah. But on the fixture, four by four was never mentioned, but this was the biggest selling product. And they called it four by four to differentiate it from the other sea of pink cooked meats on yeah. the fixture. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, that's where obviously, you you know, the, the marketeers need to think of the right way to sell that product. And they haven't thought about the consumer usage or the consumer benefits for it. Um, I guess sometimes that can go wrong. What, you know, what gets me is when the marketeers actually, um, what's the right word? Um, you know, uh, hoodwink the shopper yes. with some of the <clears throat> phraseology. So, you know, they call it... Um, you know, pizza donaletta, and then it says made in Grimsby. <laughs> you know, fresh Italian, fresh Italian style pizza made in Grimsby. Um, the one that always gets me is, is in the good old days when you were driving around looking for a, a pub to have lunch in, and you drive past the first one and it says home prepared food. You have, you, you've driven past it before you can work out that actually that means it came out of a big brakes truck. Um, <laughs> and you're, what you're actually looking for is the home prepared, I think. No? no? Home cooked, home prepared? No, home, cook, home cooked is heating up, right. heated up. Home prepared is we took the lid off the packet first. Right. Homemade, homemade is what you're looking ah, for. Ah, so there's three. Yeah, but as you can see, you, you've, driven, you've driven a couple of miles by the time you've worked out Am I getting fresh, 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 prepared, cooked and made food in my pub? Or am I just getting something that's had the lid taken off? Yes. With the truth. Andrew, uh, you're back. Okay, yeah, you froze, see. froze for 30 seconds. <laughs> Good old problem. Okay, well, yeah, a bit, bit like the food, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's talk about um, a few other examples. So I saw that even Amazon, who are obviously doing very, very well, we've got Amazon Prime Instant Video. I've no idea what that is, and I'm fairly tech savvy. Do you know what that is? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just one of the people that, whenever there's something like that, I think of whether it, whether the acronym makes up something rude. So A P I V. No, it doesn't. Apiv. Well, we're also working on a product uh, slightly outside of uh, training, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Cyber security. Do you know what phishing is? I, I've learned about phishing. Do you know what phishing is? P H. What is it? That's sending. An email with a dodgy link, isn't it? That's it. That's it. That, you then, that you then click on. That's it. So we've changed the training course from phishing, which people sort of can reach to, to something called email safety. Yeah. Yes. And then we... Does, also, um, sorry, go on. I was going to say, does what it says on the tin is usually the best, uh, the best starting point for deciding what to name something. That's very true. And we ought to turn the mirror on ourselves. So our, in our industry... We have things that we use in MDM like individual ILO, individual learning objective. Okay, we use that term, but actually what we're trying to say is what's in it for you? What the hell do you want to get out of spending five hours training today? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. the training industry as well. Yeah, that goes back to your four by four. It should have just been called, called fits on a slice of bread. It could be. And, and I understand what they did was by understanding there was a piece of terminology they were using the shopper wasn't, then they got to the point of sandwich ham, ideal for sandwiches, ideal for bagels. So they had different hands. Yeah. So by trying to figure out what terminology they were using that doesn't fit the shopper, they found new opportunity. Yeah. And I, I guess, you know, talking of the bread analogy, we get, we have toaster bread, don't we? So what came first, the toaster or the bread? <laughs> Interestingly, the toaster came. The toaster came second, and then he reinvented the bread to fit the toaster. No, because otherwise you get a standard loaf of bread, and the top top third of your of your slice sticks out and doesn't get nicely toasted. 
unless you buy square toaster bread. So I don't know if you can buy a toaster that is loaf size, but most of them are square size. And, and then the, the other part is sometimes we need to leave the consumer, the customer, the shopper, because they won't have the vocabulary. So I'm trying to think of what categories where we've led the shopper. Well, I think, you know, there was the, the example, a couple of examples last week, is would frozen foods really exist unless the supermarkets put it all in one place? Yeah, very true. Because yeah. if you're, you know, if you're cooking Sunday lunch, you're looking for a, a again, you use our industry terminology, you know, a main, a main plate protein item is what shoppers look for for their Sunday lunch. So are we having chicken, lamb, pork or beef? No. They don't think right, I'm going to have chicken, it must be frozen chicken. Yeah. We're having chicken, and then the decision is, um, is it going to be fresh, is it going to be frozen, is it going to be wings, is it going to be a whole bird, etc. So in true shopper decision hierarchy, you should put the frozen chicken portions next to the fresh chicken. Mm -hmm. But from a technical perspective, that's tough, and it's very expensive, so this category called frozen foods was invented. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes absolute sense. Yeah. So uh, yes, it, 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 um, I guess it is the challenge of product developers, marketeers, buyers that um, you know you don't get you don't get hoodwinked by your own internal thinking and knowledge. You know, too much knowledge can be a dangerous thing. Um, when you're talking about, I always remember somebody saying to me, you know, the average shopping trip is about 45 minutes. There's 25,000 SKUs in a superstore. Divide 25,000 by 45 minutes, you're down to a decision of less than half a second per product. Yes. So don't make it complicated for the shopper. You're asking them to make a decision in less than half a second. So it's, it's got to say what it does on the tin. And I think that there are some categories like cooked ham, which to me seem like just a wall of pink. Bagged salads seem like a wall of green. Um, but let's talk about bagged salads just for a moment. We were working with a client and we had shoppers in a room, you know, one of those uh, shopper focus groups, and the shoppers were picking up the bags and doing this. And we sort of had to, what are you doing? And then it reminds me of when we saw people do it with fruit. You know, when you pick up fruit and you do this, the pressure test. Now, that the consumer doesn't really have a description of what they do. They just do these things. Where yeah. we got to bag salads is they call it bounce. If it felt sort of bouncy as a bag, thumbs up. If it didn't, they weren't going to buy it. Yeah. And what the supplier cleverly did was then put that in their QA, bounce, and tried to take the intangible to tangible. It has yeah. to feel like this. Yeah. So our, yeah. our challenge for our viewers is to identify five pieces of terminology that they use that the shopper doesn't. No, oh, that, that, that'd be great. Yeah, let's get let's get the uh, let's get our viewers to send in some. Maybe we can talk about them next week. That'd be great because I think every one of them is an opportunity where we are the buffer. We need to take that, identify it, and find the opportunity that sits behind it. Yeah, I agree. All right, very good. Okay, Andrew. So terminology this week. Any ideas what we're going to talk about next week, or are we going to keep it a surprise? I think we keep it as a surprise. There's, there's so much potentially happening out there that um, something will have cropped up by next Friday, I'm sure. Okay. Andrew, you have a good weekend. Take care, and you too. Bye. Bye. Bye.